Dr. Harjokar, I, I see a lot of uh, 3HO or American Sikhs wearing full bana like you are, and very seldom do I see uh, a whole lot of uh, Punjabi women like yourself wearing, wearing the bana and the turban especially. Um, can you tell me a little bit about uh, what, what made you decide to take up this dress? I actually, when I was about 12 or 13 years old, I actually had a vision of myself being a physician and practicing in my bana in all white. And I knew that the, there was a time when I would be actually wearing a turban of the star, wearing my bana, and practicing as a professional. Um, I grew up in a small rural town in um, Western Canada, in southern Alberta, which was very rednecked. And I was one of the few minorities, you could count, the, count them on your hands. I was one of the few minorities in that town. And uh, it was very difficult because I faced a lot of racial discrimination just based on the color of my skin. So for me, at the time that I grew up, um, hearing comments like, Packy, go home, you're brown skin, not having any friends because the kids in school said, well, you're brown and your skin is brown, so I can't be your friend. That was part of my day-to-day -day existence growing up in a small town in rural Alberta. And about the time of grade four, five, six, we started as a family to experience our spirituality. We started driving from our town of Brooks uh, to Calgary and um, going to Gurdwara programs that were held at certain halls where they take the city Guru Granth Sahib Ji and we'd celebrate a Gurpurb or some Raggis would come into town and we'd go in and listen to the Kirtan and then we'd drive back home to Brooks. And I realized that on the weekends when we used to go to Calgary, I'd behave and I'd think and I'd be a different person. I'd be wearing my uh, kurta pajama, I'd be wearing my chunni. But as soon as I came home to Brooks and got ready for school, I'd put on my jeans, I'd comb my hair a different way, I'd be a different person. And I kind of felt like I was being a hypocrite. But it was also at that time that I had started to fit in with the crowd. And I realized that I have to practice my spirituality and my dharma for who I am, not for who other people want me to be. Finally, in high school, I had sort of blended in, I had merged, I had friends. But now where I got to a point in my schooling that I felt like I blended in, I didn't. I was living as a hypocrite because I knew that I needed to have a certain form. And so it wasn't until I kept, I knew every year that the time that I'm going to be wearing my dasar, my turban, my white, my bana, it's, gonna, it's coming closer and closer. But I really just couldn't make that shift because I had been dealt with all those years of prejudice, of discrimination on a very daily basis and it was very difficult. So what happened to me is in my third year of medical, uh, third year of undergraduate school, um, a situation came up where I was in the Gurdwara and I had just finished doing Kirtan, got up from the stage and my chunni fell, fell down off my head in the Gurdwara. And at that time it was pointed out to me that it's now the time. And so I realized that it was time to wear a turban, to make this change, to make this um, identifiable commitment to my spirituality, to my practice, to my discipline, and to show people that this is who I really am. And so I tied a turban. I was at women's camp here in New Mexico. And the very next day, I tied a turban, and I had all my white bana on and everything. And then the hard part began because I had to go back to my community and then go back to university and actually present myself as who I was. Who I was. And so what I actually did is I called up a few of my friends and I told them, listen, I've made a change. And they were all like curious, what's going on? What kind of change did you make? And I told them a little bit about my appearances changed. 
And I felt these three or four friends were important because I'm living for myself, not for my friends. I'm living for my dharma, not for anybody else's opinion. And so when I met my friends quietly over coffee, they all looked at me and they go, Harjot, like this looks so natural and normal for you. It's almost like this is you. But the hardest part for me was actually driving to university each morning and getting ready for my classes. And in the middle of the day, I used to walk across the University of Calgary campus to go from one building to the science building. And outside I'd pass through this mound um, where the, the statue of what university students used to call chicken was sitting there, uh, standing there. And there'd be three, four hundred students during the lunch hour laying on the lawn, watching people pass by, eating their lunch, talking. And I'd have to pass that mound every single day to go from my one course in one building to the sciences building. And as I used to make that walk every day in my white bana, in my white the star, I used to feel 400 sets of eyes following me every single move I made. That It was so difficult. And each morning I'd get up and I'd start tying my turban. And as I'm tying the folds of my turban, I'm thinking, is this really worth it? Is this really what I want to do? And each day when I'd drive to university, I'd have the Shabbat going, Abjan upar ko na pukare, pukaren ko jo uddam karta, gur parmesar taanko mare. Which translates to, now no one shall talk against the Guru's, the Guru's servant, the Guru's slave. Because if anyone dares to talk against the Guru's slave, the Guru's servant, then God himself will take care of that person. And that line of Gurbani, that Shabad from the Guru, was my uh, support. And it took me two weeks of constantly reciting that Shabad, of constantly viewing and rethinking what I was doing and tying my turban to realize that I, this is who Harjot Kaur is. This is my identity and this is the way I choose to display and practice my spirituality and my discipline and this is what I choose to display to the world. It was very difficult for me but it was a wonderful psychology course and I really feel that that was the most powerful psychological transformation or what I say metamorphosis that I went through because now when I tie my turban each morning I look myself into the mirror and I think would Guru Gobind Singh Ji be proud of me today? I get dressed for Guru Gobind Singh Ji. I get dressed to represent what Guru Gobind Singh Ji wanted. So I have a very personal relationship with my Guru on my identity, on my form and my discipline. Mm -hmm.